Hello kids, I hope all of you are doing great and I hope all of you are fit, healthy and safe. Now, for us, we are going to do the second poem in your textbook, The Beehive. And the poem for you for today is Wind. So, let's see more about it. So, before we begin, let me tell you this particular poem, The Wind, was written by Subramanya Bharati. It was actually written in Tamil and later it was translated into English by A.K. Ramanujan. So, in this poem, we are going to see the introduction about the poet, the explanation of the poem and the poetic devices. Let's get to the introduction of the poem. So, as the title suggests, wind. So, we are talking about wind over here. Okay. So, the poet has told or he has tried to describe how destructive wind could be in the beginning of the poem. And as the poem unfolds, we see that the poet is suggesting or giving us ideas how to become friendly with wind. So, the poet here compares the destructive nature of wind to the difficulties of our lives. And he goes on to say that those who are strong will surely face all types of challenges and they will come out of it but those who are weak will find it difficult. They will find it difficult with the forces of wind. Now that we've seen the introduction of the poem, let's get to see the great poet of this poem. So the poet is, as we know, Subramanya Bharati. He was born on December 11th. 1882 at Etayapura, India. Okay, this is his birthplace. It's pronounced as Etayapura. Okay, and he is otherwise called as Mahakavi Bharati. He passed away on September 12, 1921 at Chennai, India. Those days it was not Chennai, okay, it was considered as Madras under the British Raj, okay. So right now, according to our, what to say, geography, we call it as Chennai. His occupation, what was his occupation? He was a journalist, a poet, a writer, he was a teacher, a patriot. English, French and had a smattering for Arabic. 
so he was good in all these languages okay so this is a small uh, maybe a quote or a write up by him in tamil and the translation for that there is no caste system it is a sin to divide people on caste basis the ones who are really of a superior class are the ones excelling in being just wise educated and loving okay so here i would like to tell you that subramanya bharati was a person who stood up against caste system okay and he was a person who was against the societal problems the problems within the society and he used his poems and his writings to create awareness among the people now that we know about the poet and the introduction of the poem let's get to the poem itself wind comes softly don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf there look what you did you threw them all down so in the first paragraph the poem wind has been personified so how do i say it's personified wind comes softly don't break the shutters don't scatter don't throw down the books on the shelf so that means these are qualities of a human being so the attributes or qualities of a human is given to wind to the wind so here the poet is talking to the wind he is talking directly to the wind and he tells it to come softly then he describes the destructive nature of wind he says that the wind blows so strongly that it breaks the shutters of the window and it scatters the papers around okay so the poet says these are the things which the wind does and he goes on to say that wind is so powerful that the wind knocks down the box from the shelves then finally the poet looks at wind and he says look at the destruction which you have caused look at the destruction which is caused by you so do you remember in the first or in the beginning of the poem i told you that the poem is personified so if you notice the poet is directly talking to the wind as if wind was a person you tore the pages of the box you brought rain again you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings frail crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters crumbling wood crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts the wind god winnows and crushes them all So in the second paragraph we see that because of the wind's force the pages of the books have been torn down and the poet says that you have brought rain again so it's raining because of you again and the poet 
Further goes on to say that the wind is very clever in making fun of people who are weak. So see, you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings. Weaklings, people who are weak in mind and body. Okay, so... By this, the poet means that when a strong wind blows, all the things which are fragile, weak and feeble break easily. Okay? So, in the beginning of the poem, the poet introduces us to wind as if the wind was a child. But as the poem progresses, we see that the wind is compared to the destructive nature of youth. Y O U T H youth. Okay? A youth who is full of energy, violence, and destruction. So we get to see here that. The poet is comparing wind to the destructive nature of a young lad or young youth. Okay? As in, normally we tend to think that youth are full of energy. But here, the poet compares wind to, to a youth who is full of energy combined with the nature of violence and destruction. Frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. Okay? So here the poet says that the wind is so mighty that it is breaking everything that comes in his way. He says that the weak houses are falling, the doors are breaking down, the beam which supports the roof is also falling apart. And all the things made of wood are falling too. So the poet says that people are unable to stand properly due to the heavy wind and the people too are falling. So the people over here we see that are scared of wind and their hearts are beating at a faster rate. Okay, so see here. Crumbling bodies. That means the people are not able to stand against the wind. Crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. So here the poet says that people are so scared of wind that their hearts beat at a faster rate. And finally, if you look at the last line. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. So here, the poet is addressing the wind as God. He compares the people with wheat and says that as we winnow the wheat to separate the grain from the chaff, similarly, the wind god separates the strong people from weak people. So due to the heavy wind and strong wind, all the weak things fall and get destroyed. Now, what do I mean by winnows? It's a process used in agriculture where the grain is separated from the skin and the unwanted things. Okay, by blowing high-pressured air, 
with high pressured air when this process is done all the unwanted skin the leaves and the rest of the unwanted parts of the grain is blown away by wind so similarly here people are compared to wheat as in because of the strong wind the weak people are blown away and only the strong people survive the wind so wind separates or wind winnows the weak people moving on to the third paragraph he won't do what you tell him so come let's build strong homes let's join the doors firmly practice to form the body make the heart steadfast so finally the poet comes to a conclusion and he says wind will not listen to us and he is not going to do what we say so instead of instructing the wind the poet says we should prepare ourselves we should build strong homes and close the door tightly so that the wind does not enter our homes and the poet again continues to say we should make our body and our heart strong enough so that even when there are difficulties we should be able to overcome all the challenges he says it's better or it's best to make our body and our heart strong so that even if difficulties arise we will be able to overcome all the challenges looking at the last paragraph do this and the wind will be friends with us the wind blows out weak fires he makes strong fires roar and flourish his friendship is good we praise him every day so the poet in the last stanza says that by doing all these that is to build strong homes to close the door tightly and to keep our body and mind and our heart strong we can become friends with wind and he says that wind too will become friends with us okay so here the poet tells us that we should make ourselves strong enough to overcome all the problems of our life as in he says that if we do all these necessary tips the problems which comes in our life we can overcome them without any difficulty okay so every hurdle in our life makes us stronger and helps us explore our inner strength so the poet here goes on to say that by doing all these things that is build strong homes close the doors tightly and keep our body and hearts strong by doing all this we can become friends with wind and the wind is going to be friendly with us too so what does the poet mean here he means that when troubles or when problems arise 
when it comes in our lives we should make ourselves strong enough to overcome them every hurdle in our life makes us stronger and helps us to explore our inner strength the poet continues or he elaborates that the wind blows all the things which are weak only those things which are strong remain and flourish to become stronger so that's what is said in these two lines the wind blows out weak fires that means the things which are weak is blown away he makes strong fires roar and flourish so he says even if the poet says that even if the strong wind blows only the strong things or strong people survive wind okay and the wind makes the strong flourish and become more stronger So finally the poet ends the poem by saying the friendship of wind is good it is good to have friendship with wind and we should praise his friendship every day like as though it were a god So through this poem the poet sends a strong message that when problems arise in our lives we should not feel weak and we should not cry about the problem but we should try we should try to find a solution and we should face the challenge with lots of courage so throughout the poem this is what the poet is trying to convey and we see that one particular point is stressed throughout the poem what is it the weak will be removed or the weak will be blown out and the strong will remain so wind or the qualities of wind is compared to the problems of our lives as if when we have problems if we are weak we are going to suffer but at the same time if we are strong we will remain and survive now that we know about the poet and the explanation of the poem let's get to see what are the poetic devices used in this poem okay now since we already know that this is a poem written in tamil okay and it's translated into english so hence we do not have a rhyme scheme okay so the entire poem is written in free verse there is no rhyme scheme in the poem okay children so remember for the poem wind you do not have a rhyme scheme okay So let's see what are the literary devices or the poetic devices used in the poem. So the first is anaphora. When a word is repeated at the start of two or more consecutive lines, it is the device of anaphora. Yes, we've seen this in many other poems. Okay, so anaphora in this poem on lines 2 3 and 4 it begins with don't and on lines 6 and 8 it begins with you okay now moving on to the next poetic device that is the personification so wind has been personified okay so i have already taught you this many times giving the attributes of humans to something which is 
not a human being. Okay, it can be a living thing, it can be a non-living thing. When you give the human qualities or human characteristics to something else, we consider that as personification. Okay, so when the poet says you are, he is referring to wind as you. That means he is treating wind as a person. So hence, we have the poetic device, personification in this poem. Moving on to the next poetic device or the figure of speech as we normally call it. The next is alliteration. The repetition of a consonant sound in close connection. Okay, so for example, we have wind, winnows. Won't want. So if you see here, the sound w is repeated in a closed uh, scenario. So in this case, we call it as alliteration. Okay? And finally, the poetic device for you, symbolism. So what is symbolism? When you use something to represent something else. Okay, so in this case, symbolism means that the thing refers to some other thing. So here, the wind is a symbol. The wind is a symbol. It refers to the challenges in life. Okay, so the wind is used to show the challenges of life. Okay, the poet is using wind. As a symbol for the adversities in our life. Okay, so hence we have this poetic device, the symbolism. I hope you have understood 